I'm like a garden hack. You know, I, I don't, I never read anything about it. Yeah. Like but a lot of stuff I'm into, I'll study it very thoroughly, but I just, I just do it. See how he's putting off that bitter, yeah. that super bitter. Now this one will be nice. That'll be a good tasting one. He'll be bitter. These are like more heat tolerant. What kind do you want? You know, honestly, anything. Like that's the thing with, you know, with a torta. Like it's like the toppings are not dictated to you. We can put anything we want on it. So honestly, these that have like a little bit more, that are a little more rugged are probably gonna be the best ones. Taste that one, that one's still no problem. No, no, it's got it. It's got that like summertime. I'm gonna quit rolling lettuce. <laughs> kind of pisses me off. We just went through the whole gamut of like your feelings on gardening. I, I wonder this, because I ask people this all the time, like when you're actually out in the field and you're hunting, mm -hmm. are you considering what you're gonna make with that animal? Like, or does it, not even, does it not even factor into your mind? Are you just so focused on what you're doing that you don't even think about it? With big animals, no, I don't think about it. Because yeah. I just think of it like it's a ton of stuff. I just keep going back to the things that I intend to make and mm -hmm. want to make. And so it's like, that's what that's the motivation I need. Freeze are using the garage to store stuff, and I'm heavily motivated by that. So like, if its that. level gets too low, you're like, I gotta get out. I, oh yeah, man. You do know. you just go out to your freezer and open it up and like look at it, like like, oh, yeah. like and I know that I have <laughs> revel wealth. in it. I know that I have wealth or not. <laughs> Mountain goat's a funny animal. Like I love them, like as a species to hunt, as and as an animal, like just how unique and peculiar they are. Like oh, they're yeah. they're quirky animals. Mm -hmm. The last one that I shot. Uh, we didn't pack out any meat because we actually got stuck in a snowstorm and we had to eat the whole thing. So I haven't had a chance to like actually bring it back into the kitchen. But I had this idea, maybe because I was really hungry and it was cold, that I was like, I want to make something out of it. So I want to make this thing today. This is like a burger on steroids. You know, this is like, how do we make a sandwich that has even more flavor? So torta literally just means like sandwich um, when you're talking like Mexican cuisine. So there's really no like hard and fast rule on what can go on one or how you make it or what it's made out of. But we're gonna make one today that's called a milanesa. So it's like a, a cutlet torta. All I'm doing here, by the way, is I'm just kind of cutting these into small pieces because I'm gonna have you bash these out yep. into cutlets. It's counterintuitive because you think, okay, I got it too thin and I'm gonna, now it's gonna dry out. Getting them really thin is what's gonna keep the moisture in it. We're gonna fry this thing, but we're gonna fry it fast. And that's how you get a super juicy, super flavorful schnitzel or milanese. Yeah, that's perfect. Those are gonna kill it. My kids like this job. Yeah, just uh, yeah, take out your I'll be like, no, just go just like this. Yeah. I hit them straight on with the spike side, but then you move to that, that flat side. Oh, and then and give start them a little. To, oh, there you go. This is like textbook. This is what you want for a Milanesa, you know? It's not super, super thin, but it's, you know, that right there is gonna be ultra crunchy and still really, really flavorful. My breading choice, you know, flour and egg wash is standard. I swear by the, the club cracker, because there's just a little bit of sugar in these crackers, when it fries, it'll get golden faster. So the toppings for this thing are all over the board, man. Like if you ask somebody like, what goes on top of a torta? And they'll be like, I don't know, what do you, what do you like? Like, so we're gonna put some lettuce on it. What I wanna do is shave those onions pretty thin, slice these jalapenos pretty thin, squeeze some lime juice over them and let them almost like quick pickle, you know? Like, because we don't have time. Traditionally, you would use like, you know, the pickled jalapenos, the ones that are like army green and have been sitting in brine for like your whole life. Like that's totally a topping for a torta. Sure, yeah. Um, but Speaking of pickling shit, hold on a minute. I want to show you these. Uh... Oh, your radish pickles. See, like just the freaking odor that comes off. Well, that's they're always going to be like that. Like pickled radishes smell bad. So that's standard. I've never in my life pickled a radish. I just didn't know You're what to do with them. You're going to cut your arm off with that thing. I didn't know what to do with them all. <laughs> you nailed these. Mayonnaise can go on this sandwich. And look, I'm like, generally, if there's an excuse to put mayonnaise on something, I'm 100% in. Like we could fry your shoe and put mayonnaise on it. And sure, man. That. Yeah. But I think there's a better thing to put on it, and it's um, like homemade refried beans. You can buy, like these are just canned pinto beans. There's nothing in them. They're just, they're just beans cooked in salt water. And then fry your own refritos, and then smash those bad boys up, and use those as like a sandwich spread. Yeah, yeah. Because that like sets this. When you say frying, you mean just pan, like don't do it in a pan. But what happens is that that quick exposure to that really hot heat changes the flavor profile entirely. Plus, what it's gonna do is the starch of these beans is going to emulsify the fat in the pan. So we won't have like this greasy thing. What we'll yeah. instead have is like hot bean mayonnaise. 
just absorbs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So speaking of, so I brought manteca from like the Spanish Mexican grocery store here in town, but what do you have some like rendered animal fat that we can use? Yeah, for this I have instead uh, some pork fat. Someone sent to me, and I have rendered bear oil, and I have rendered swan oil, but I forgot to label the jar. <laughs> so we just got to guess. I, I got to find it. I feel like my swan oil is in that blue. So or this is no, bear that's that, Oh, okay, that's not it. Okay, Son of a bitch, man. This might be that swan. What is this? That might be the swan. <laughs> But I know that's bear. That's my bear last right. spring. Here's a, that's bear for my buddy's bear. This is a small bear grease. So let's taste this one real quick. No, nope, that's it. This is pork. No, it's not pork. That's not pork. There's no way there's pork fat in a jar. Taste that. In my house. It's not. That might be the swan oil. Smell it. Like it smells like you no, really like off a dog. I feel like my buddy Brody gave me that from a bear. No, I don't know what that is. Son of a bitch. I can't believe I didn't label it. Mystery grease is gonna make its way into our refried today because this That's mystery no grease good. tastes good. It smells amazing. You wanna start breading these pieces of meat? We're gonna add a secret ingredient here. So this is like chipotle hot sauce to the egg wash here. So give that a little quick mix up. You know, there's there's your like little quick chef hot tip that people like don't understand is like, we keep adding, we'll add, it's all about layers, you know? So it's like, add a little, you have to season these components. The only part of this I'm not gonna season is the flour, but that's only because the breadcrumbs are so, or cracker crumbs rather, are so seasoned. So, pretty basic flour situation here into our egg. And then over here. Those little pieces, like those big chunks of cracker. And so good. So this is a Montana. Mountain Goat, yeah? Yeah, I first applied for a Mountain Goat tag here. Must have been the first year I was able to apply. It was 97, 1997. You've been applying since 97 yeah. to get this? Yeah. As, a, as a resident? Yeah. For, what? Then I had a long period as a non-resident and back to a resident. Meanwhile, my brother's drawn twice, two of them. So anyways, finally drew the damn tag. And I mean, very close to here. Really? Yeah, you know, just south here. Like sleep at your own house and go hunting? Or did you actually yeah, like, sleep, yeah? You can sleep at home. <laughs> But it's a, uh, you know, it's challenging, man, because you're like, if you wait into the year, like people want to wait because you want to have them grow long hair. Right. So you got a sweet mountain goat rug. And what that winds up creating is like pretty bad conditions in the in the mountains. And um, it's dicey. So that's my experience hunting mountain goats, man. I wanted, you know, I went, to, I was in Alaska. We were hunting like the Prince William Sound, basically, except oh, no. we weren't doing it from boats. Like we hiked in into the range. Um, we we're about 20 miles back from the ocean. And I wanted, you know, I wanted like the hairiest billy I could possibly find. So we went right after Thanksgiving in Alaska. Yeah, which I didn't, late. Yeah, it was late. And it was fine, everything was fine. The weather was great and I was like, what's the big deal? You know, killed the billy, but then I fell coming down with it and I hurt myself. And so we had to stay another couple days because my knee was swollen so big that I just couldn't, oh, I couldn't right. like hike out. So I had to just wait it out, you know, wait for the swelling to go down and stuff like that. So those two extra days though, were like our death nail because then all of a sudden this blizzard comes in and we got stuck for 17 days back there. Seriously. So that's why I don't have any mountain goat meat. We just ate the mountain goat. It was 2018. Really? My experience with mountain goat. Here's all the dishes I've made with mountain goat. Goat roasted over a fire. That yeah. is it. Like that is the grand extent <laughs> of the dishes that I've made. So we're doing something new today. You know, people are like, refried beans, what does that mean? Like, this is literally what it means. Like, we're not frying, you don't fry it twice, you just cook it twice. So, um, super hot, unknown fat. You think swan, I think. It might be, but I know I don't think that that's the swan. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but it tastes good. But, so this stuff's screaming hot, so you gotta be real careful when you pour this in here so you don't, like, blast yourself. So dump that in. And it just, it just integrates that fat, man, right? Yeah, it will. Like, so yeah, you let this thing come back up to a boil and want boil and you just kind of go in here and give these things their mash. And that's what gets that to that texture. And just kind of, you know, stir it while you mash it sort of thing. Oh, that's cool. This is my patented washing machine method. So shake and stir at the same time. I'm gonna leave that here for now. That, that can just chill and do its, do its thing. All right, we got to fry. Then we gotta assemble, like fry and assemble. So let's go outside and throw these bad boys in the fryer. So. You do one at a time? Yeah, I don't know how many we're gonna be able to fit in here. 
think we can do two. I think we can probably get this second one in here right beside this area where you hunted. Yeah, pretty close. very close to here. And uh, waited till the end because I want them to grow real thick, long hair. Yeah. You know, as the block of time I had set aside started to approach, it was like the the you know blizzard, of, like the blizzard of twenty. <laughs> Oh, it was miserable, man. Miserable. And then all of a sudden it got the weather, like, bam, turned nice again. Yeah. And then there was a go. All right, let's take these in. Steve, will you grab me, uh, like, a serrated knife so we can cut these bread mm -hmm. open? This is like a one, this is a one person portion too, by the way. Like, you get a torta, this is the size of a torta. You're like, this isn't like some measly little tea. But you're not going to find that that bread many places. No, I went to the actual Mexican market to find that bread. But if you couldn't find it, like, don't let that stop you, man. You could use a baguette or something like that. All right, so there's our bottom bun. Grab our top here. It's your double layer. Hell yeah. This dude right here looks like he fits perfectly. I like that. Damn. I know, man. Some queso fresco here kind of bust him up right over the top. I'm honestly, now I'm like, what order do I want to go in? How's it going to look the nicest? <laughs> let's go with that, and then let's do this. Let's hit with this dude first. His onions and peppers, that one's going to be spicy. It's going to be good. Steve, I'm excited. That's beautiful. You doll, you doll yours up. Oh, you know what we need? We forgot, almost forgot, was the lettuce, dude. Yes. That's a, <laughs> that's a big sandwich. Look at that, dude. Oh, yeah. That's a sandwich, my man. You can get after it. Yeah. Right now, right here and there. Let's see. This one's, you gotta do the, the sandwich stance. <laughs> you gotta lean into it. Mm -hmm. Like lean it into a stiff wind, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's good. That's why stuff that's good is good because there's a lot to it. Yeah. Do you mean you get lazy and strip it down? Yeah, that's good. You lose stuff. There's never been anything wrong with a piece of pounded meat coated in crumbs and fried in delicious fat. I mean, I know sometimes people knock, you know, like, oh, all you ever do with your wild game is fry it. Like, sometimes frying it is exactly what you need to do with it, you know? Mm -hmm. like, I don't apologize for frying shit, man. No way. <laughs> this is just one of a thousand ways we could have done this. We could have put anything on here, but what makes it good is the combo of stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Crispy meat, soft bread, like really, really, really savory and fatty, frankly, beans, the acidity of all this stuff, the heat, like translate this to a burger for a second, you know? Because I feel like hunters, they get home, they have all their meat and they know how to make like four things and burgers are one of them. Yeah. But they make them still in kind of a pedestrian way. It's just like, oh, it's a burger, you know? But they don't realize that a burger can be made great and a burger can be made mediocre too. That's the next step, man. If you're a hunter and you really care about what you're doing and you're really thoughtful when you're in the woods, when you're on the mountain, whatever the case may be, like that thoughtfulness should carry over into the kitchen. Don't put all that work into something to then not honor the animal by bringing it home, mm -hmm. grinding the whole thing up and just turning it into a pot of chili. In my mind, at least as a chef, you've missed the bigger opportunity, which is to like redefine that relationship with your food. Not everything has to be fancy. This isn't fancy, man. This is just delicious. Yeah. But I think we did, in my mind at least, we did justice by this thing that you had to put a hell of a lot of work into. And just recognize that, you know, from, especially from a chef's perspective, like all the chefs I know in Europe, they fight, literally fight each other to get access to truly wild game, to the guy who went out and shot the ducks. They don't want the ones that were raised at the farm. They want that mallard that, that, that the guy down the road shot. Yeah. Why? Because it's just the pinnacle of the best ingredient they can possibly get their hands on. But for some reason in our country, we've lost. Like that's all been missed. Like we instead think the most valuable cut of meat we can get is that steak that's cellophane wrapped down at the grocery store. Yeah. That's what's valuable to us. And I hope that things like this, and maybe you and I will get to cook some more as time goes on. I hope those things, people start to change their mind about that. Like this is a hell of a lot more valuable.